I know that I said that I was going to post another video um, about the miracle of my son. So I wanted to put that out there because I just feel like the Lord's pressing it on my heart to put that out there and uh, how awesome a God we serve. And um, he's always just so amazing. He's always there for us when we need him. And um, I just want to, you know, give you that hope and know that He's returning for us so soon, and it's just uh, it's just an amazing thing that um, that he loves us as much as he does. It, it just makes me cry um, every time I think about him. Sometimes I think about him and I just cry because I'm just so thankful that he he abides with me um, and he abides with his children, and he's so faithful. So anyway, to get on with the story about Riley, Riley, uh, my son, he is now um, 12 years old, but when he was first born, um, he was born in July and he was born with pneumonia, but the doctors didn't see it right away. I actually could hear that he was breathing odd and they didn't catch it. And I kept saying that, don't you think that he sounds like weird? Like can't you hear that? Because when he would breathe, especially when he would sleep, so they had a hard time hearing it, especially because he wasn't sleeping when he was at the doctor's office. And, um, and we're talking about like right after we got him home and he would kind of go like, uh, uh. and it sounded so cute because he was like, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, well that might be normal. But then as it went on, I was like, I, I just don't think a baby does that because I already had my daughter at that point. I was like, she never did that before. So, but the doctors kept checking her or him and, um, and he seemed fine. Well, when I had Riley, um, my parents at the time had owned a uh, condo and so they were in Florida. And so we were in Pennsylvania at the time. And so my husband and I decided that after the baby was born, um, we would take an auto train. So take our vehicle and everything and get a private room, um, in the train and take a direct train ride down to Florida so that I could get my parents help with the baby as well. And so that's what we did. So we, um, scheduled a two week, three week appointment. I think it was a three week appointment for the, um, doctor who was in Florida and uh, like my doctor in Pennsylvania coordinated with the doctor in Florida they were great about that and so when we got to Florida everything went well but he was still doing that like weird breathing and so um, we um, we ended up going to that doctor's appointment there and I even said to them there like doesn't he sound weird to you like can't you hear like can you hear that breathing and and they were like no 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 his lungs sound fine um so i was like i guess it's just me so anyway um on our way back and we only stayed there for two weeks or something like that um anyway i think it was two weeks so on our way back we you know we took the the train ride back um and in the middle of the night it was like one o'clock in the morning, no one around. We were about to go to sleep and I was breastfeeding of course at the time. And so when, um, and of course we had our, a private room within the, the train. So we thought that was better because of, you know, we didn't want to be near people. Um, and you know, we were trying to be really safe about it. So anyway, when I went to pick my arm up to, cause I was laying down with him when I went to because he was fussing so much. He was fussing, fussing, fussing. I said to my husband, I was like, something is wrong. Like, I, well, I don't know what's going on with him. Maybe he's just hungry, but I just felt in my spirit, like something is wrong. And so I, um, I, I kind of went like this as I was laying down and I kind of knocked him in my head, in the head a little bit with my elbow and he just freaked out. And then I was like, Oh my gosh, what did I do? Like, I must have heard him because he, I mean, he just went ballistic and I was like trying to calm him down and I was just having a hard time calming him down. Um, so I tried to just get him on, you know, my boob because I was like, okay, maybe he's hungry, but he just wouldn't even feed. So, and he, it, 
and he tried to feed a little, but when he did, he was just like, uh, just kind of like, uh, you could tell like he just didn't feel good or something was wrong. And so what I did was, um, oh, I'm sorry. What I did was, um, I just kind of tried to like sue them and, you know, as us mothers do, you know, some of you watching are probably mothers and I'm like trying to sue them, but I could just, I was like, Ronnie, some, that's my husband's name. Something is wrong with Riley. And he was like, well, Janelle, there's really nothing we can do about it. But once we get home, you know, we'll just sleep it off. And once we get home, we'll take him right into the doctors. And, um, and I'm just started getting kind of hysterical because I just felt like something was really wrong. And, um, you know, that typically wouldn't be me. I would just kind of like say, okay, yeah, you're right. Let's just, let's just wait until we get home. But I said to him, I was like, here, you hold him. And so I handed him to him. And when I did, Riley just like went completely lifeless. And like, you picked up his arm and he would just, and Ronnie was like, okay, something is wrong. And I just lost it. I was like bawling my eyes out. And he was also kind of like, blowing bubbly foamy things out of his mouth now some people say oh, okay but well, that's normal bubbles from a baby and while it is these bubbles look different to me um and so um we called our pediatrician in the middle of the night and it was awesome because he he answered and um a great pediatrician and he answered and so Ronnie is telling him, you know, the symptoms that he's having and, um, and my concern and our pediatrician, cause we just wanted an answer. Like, what do you think we should do? And the pediatrician was like, you've got to, you've got to get off the train. Now this is a, the auto train does not stop. It's a direct line. It doesn't stop at all. There are no stops in between. Okay. So we're talking from Florida to Pennsylvania, no stops in between. It's an auto train, which means that your vehicles are also on the train. And I believe that's the reason why it's direct. So anyway, I was like, we've got to get off this train. Now at this point, R Ronnie hands me Riley back and I go outside of our room. Now I'm in the hallway of the, um, I'm in the hallway of the, the, uh, the train. And I'm just like bouncing him like this and, and I am bawling and crying out to the Lord. I'm like, oh Lord, please, 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 please help me. I don't know what to do. There is no one around. There is no one around. And I was like frantic. I was like, Jesus, Jesus, please, please help me. I was like, God, I don't know what to do, but I know you know what to do. It, it still makes me emotional <laughs> just talking about it, but. So just as I was praying, it, it, we're talking two, three o'clock in the morning now at this point, this woman, you know, um, afar off comes up the stairs, okay, where the private rooms are. And she's starting to walk towards me. And she said, honey, what's wrong? And I said, there's something wrong with the baby. I said, there's something wrong with the baby. I gotta get off this train. And she happened to work for the train there was no one else around I, I don't even know where she came from I, I'm wondering if she was an angel seriously but she goes okay hold on so she goes running down the the hallway the other direction and so um maybe five minutes later I don't know it felt like an hour but it wasn't that long she comes running back to me she said guys follow me follow me she takes us down to where the conductor is and he says, listen, he said, this train does not stop. He said, but he said, I have um, called and he said, you don't understand. He said, if you would have waited even five minutes later, we wouldn't have been able to stop because a hospital wouldn't have been, you know, close enough. It wouldn't have made sense. He said, but he said, um, there happens to be a hospital. I'm stopping the train. You're in Fayetteville, North, we're in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and you happen to be really close to 
the hospital. So we called an ambulance and they're coming for you. So they stopped the train. The conductor said, here's my phone number. He said, when you are ready to get back on this train, you call, uh, you call me personally. He said, but no one will know about this because this train does not stop. He said, but he said, I'll stop for you to pick you back up in, in North Carolina when you're ready to go back home in Pennsylvania. Whew. Listen, guys, the Lord uses people, you know, anyway. So on with the story. Oh, I'm sorry for crying. Holy moly. Gather myself. Okay. So we, uh, the, 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 uh, the EMS, the ambulance gets there. We get off the train with our, our luggage and, um, we get into the ambulance and, you know, the train, the train starts pulling away and the EMS guy says, and he's checking him right there without moving yet. And he goes, well, he said, I guess we got to take it to the hospital anyway, but I don't see anything wrong with this baby. And I'm like, am I losing it? <laughs> like, what? There's definitely something wrong here. But I was like, okay, I, I guess we just, I, I messed up. I don't know. But to me, he was still kind of blowing these. I was like, don't you see him like blowing these like buggy? He goes, that's normal. And I'm like, something's wrong. So he was like, what? He said, the train's leaving. I've got to take you to the hospital. He said, it worked out though. We happen to be five minutes from the ho one of the best hospitals um, for, for children here. And I'm like, that, that's awesome. That's that once again, the Lord just is taking care of the situation. So we get in to the hospital and the EMS guy's now talking to the nurses and he says, well, the mom might be overacting because she thinks there's something wrong with the baby. And, you know, she, um, she had told me that, you know, she, she smacked his head with his, her elbow, but, you know, she's just overreacting. Um, and I was like, well, no, I said, there's something wrong. Like he's not breathing right. He's like lifeless. And, you know, he's like blowing these weird bubbles. And so, you know, they put him in the room and the one nurse checked him out. She's like, there's really, there's nothing wrong. And then, um, another nurse came in and she checked him and she said, no, I, I think there's something wrong here. And she actually was the one who saw what I saw and got x-rays and, or an MRI. I don't know, guys, I'm not in the medical field, so I, I can't even remember which one it was. And he ended up having double pneumonia, <laughs> double pneumonia. And he had, the doctor said, we're gonna start treatment and give him intravenous antibiotics. He said, and um, we'll see if he makes it through the night. And I, I cried out, I cried out to God. Because at that point when he, they brought him back to the room, he was blowing rust colored bubbles, like there was blood in his bubbles. And I fell to the floor in the hospital and I said, oh God, please. Please spare my child. Please help Riley, Lord. Do anything. I'll do anything for you, please. I said, you know, I love you. I just beg of you. I said, I won't deny you to these doctors. And these doctors are probably looking at me like I'm crazy anyway. Because I'm literally screaming out on the hospital floor, like, for everyone to see. I didn't even care. And, um, and the doctor said, if you would have stayed on that train, Riley wouldn't have made it the night. He would have died by the time you got home. And, uh, we had found out later that the train actually ended up being held up for five hours because there was a crash. So... <laughs> We would have been held up with a dead child, but God in his mercy spared Riley's life. I'm sorry, I'm ugly crying now. So anyway, so um, he ended up uh, in the hospital for five days and uh, his butt got so raw because of the, you know, the intravenous antibiotics just, you know, taking the skin right off of his behind poor guy 
but they said he made an absolute amazing recovery to the point where you guys can go home earlier. We have never... We haven't seen this kind of recovery. He said that he just made an excellent recovery. And uh, I was so thankful. And um, so we had stayed there for five days. And uh, and we stayed at, I think, like a Ronald McDonald house, and uh, which allows visitors to come in and stay. It was, it was amazing. The whole place was amazing. I think it was, I don't know what, I think it was the Fayetteville house. I can't remember um, in North Carolina, but... Um, so it ended up being like one of the best pediatric hospitals or something from what I was told. Um, so, but it was such a beautiful thing. Now here, my brother had friends who happened to live like right around the corner from the train and we called the conductor. He told us what day he was going to stop. And so we ended up staying with my brother's friend who, um, lived right near the train station. Um, she she was fairly close. It was like, I think, 20 minutes away or something like that. And so um, uh, we had stayed with her the night, and then she dropped us uh, at the, well, she waited for us. So we were at the train station, and I'm talking to the, you know, the, the train station and the guy, and he goes, oh, no, he said, you don't understand. This train doesn't stop. I said, I know the train doesn't stop. I said, but the conductor, or I said, I know the train's going to stop. Like the conductor told me that, that he was going to stop. He said, no, they're not allowed. He was like, the train's not going to stop. Like, I just, I'm making you aware of that. It's not going to stop. And so we waited and waited and the, the train didn't come at the time that like he had said that it was going to be passing there. And um, so we were like, okay, well, I, I guess the train's not coming. And the guy kind of made it sound like there was a train that had already come. So we were like, oh, maybe we, we, maybe we missed it, you know? So we had started to leave. And um, not two minutes later, Ronnie was like, Janelle, I'm praying about it. And I am just feeling so strongly that the Lord is putting on my heart. We have to go back. We have to go back. We have to go back to the train station. And I, I was like, okay. I said, because, you know, when when Ronnie says the Lord spoke to him or when I say the Lord spoke to me, you know, we we acknowledge that, you know, within one another. And so um, we, we have our, my brother's friend, drive us back to the train station. And no sooner did we get back to the train station and the train pulls up and stops and the conductor comes out and grabs our bags and the guy who was at the station is like this like what's happening right now <laughs> it, was awesome. it was so it was so, god is so good guys god is so good riley made a full recovery we got back to our house um he's 12 years old bright amazing intelligent and loves the lord loves the lord with his whole heart <laughs> I just couldn't, I can't, you can't make this stuff up. That's how awesome our God is. I pray that you would please, if you don't know him, give your heart to him. Give your heart to him. Trust him. Trust him with everything. Give it all to him because none of this matters. He's coming back for us. He's coming back for his bride. He's coming back for his children very, very soon. And I'm so sorry for crying. I'm just a mess. <laughs> but um, but um, I'll share more stories. There are so many. The Lord has done so much. He is such an awesome God. And I pray that you will see just how amazing he is. The Lord had told us, um, we had lived in Pennsylvania, and he had told us to move to Costa Rica. So that's the next story I'll tell you. For now, God bless I pray that if you don't know Jesus Christ, please repent. Just repent. Give it all to him. Lay it all down before him. Trust in him. He loves you. He loves you with a fervent love, with a jealous, he's a jealous God. He wants you all to himself. He doesn't want you bowing down to anything else or trusting anything more than him. He is 
the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end, the first and last. He's the great I Am, and He's an amazing God. God bless.